My name, as Claire said, is Steve Chester. I'm the Director of Media here at ISBAR. And over the past 12 months in particular, uh, we've been looking at actually particularly how we can really dig into the digital supply chain. Uh, and this has been a key priority for um, ISBAR. Um, and it's really rooted in our manifesto we developed a couple of years ago, which is undergoing some change at the moment. But improving standards in digital media and trying to create a transparent, responsible, and accountable supply chain has been a key aspect of what we've been trying to focus on. Of course, all media supply chains need to be transparent and accountable, but there were more questions in digital, more complexity, more players, uh, more potentially obfuscation in that supply chain, uh, and none more so in many ways than uh, in programmatic, where there can be a direct supply chain, but there can be lots of obfuscation, lots of players in the supply chain which you're not certain of, uh, uncertainty in terms of margins and in terms of actually how much media, actually working media, is then left at the end after margins are taken through the supply chain. As long as there's transparency in those and you actually understand the value of each of those players, then that's what we want. But at the moment, in today's uh, ecosystem, particularly with the open exchange, that's not necessarily apparent. Um, there have been many studies actually looking at, uh, at transparency and trying to actually get an idea about who these players are, what value do they offer, so you can have a clear line in terms of actually how much you invest, how much lands on working media, and then each of the intermediaries in between, what value do they add, how do they actually get you to reach your target audience in a more efficient, effective manner. So um, in terms of our strategic priorities, digital accountability, again, has been key, a key aspect of this. And this project um, has really been one of our number one priorities, as determined by you. Um, so we were inspired by a number of studies in the industry Notably, many of you will be familiar with the WFA's, the World Federation of Advertisers report, as of five years ago, that produced this waterfall chart. It's a much more expansive report. Often it gets reduced to one chart. There's much more detail in there. But it really inspired, the, uh, really inspired this project and many others. And really the concern here, you know, regardless of the numbers and whether or not the numbers are completely accurate in terms of today's uh, money, it's representative of the fact that a lot of value uh, potentially is delivered at the end, but lots of uh, margin is taken out through the supply chain. So, you know, a pound in, possibly then 40 pence in the pound landing on the publisher, and then if fraud hasn't been uh, sort of drawn out, all elements of fraud, maybe not every piece of inventory here is viewable, and maybe there's some of the elements of that that's not safe, brand safe, and maybe not even in your target audience. You can see this rapidly could diminish, and you could find yourself in the worst case, uh, sort of case scenario of being single digits. Obviously, then significantly better in the sort of worse that this, this picture paints. Equally well, it could be better. We just don't know. And it depends on your individual supply chain and even down to individual impressions. So um, this study here was more of a sort of anecdotal study. It did interview people in the industry. This is five years ago. Clearly, this is from a kind of broad global perspective, not, not UK specific, and clearly five years ago. Uh, the ANA, our sister association in the States, did a more granular analysis they could only get as far as the, the ad exchange itself because they only had advertiser data. So they couldn't see how much money was landing on the publisher and then beyond the exchange and looking at how much margin was being taken out beyond that. Um, so what we wanted to do was to undertake a study, an end-to-end -end study, if you will, um, a trying to then ascertain how much money goes in, how much money goes out, and then declared margins through the supply chain here. So you can see actually who's actually in the supply chain, what margin are they taking, and you can actually then derive the value that each is offering. Um, we're doing this uh, through working with the AOP, so with the publisher base here, uh, and with advertisers who are willing both to put the data in so we can see money in, money out. And we want to undertake this with an industry-leading player, hence why we're working with PwC, and we already work with PwC on a strategic basis, have done for the last year and a half. Um, and Sam will go into detail, essentially, than the, the methodology which we're approaching to try and deliver this. Um, it should be pointed out just at this early stage, uh, particularly in this presentation, that this is disclosed media only. So this is about, uh, this is working with clients who have ownership over the data on disclosed models you have with your agency. It's not looking at undisclosed models. So therefore, in a sense, what the study is looking at is looking beyond the agency, further down the supply chain, and actually looking um, at each of the players in the supply chain going right, through, right the way through to publishers. This isn't looking at undisclosed, um, but it will look at private marketplaces, it will look at open exchanges. But I won't get into too much more detail, I'll pass to Sam to give you that. So, across to Sam. So, um, fundamentally, the way in which this study is designed to operate is for the first time ever, globally, to properly join up the spend from the client through the agency on the buy side 
with the money that comes through to the publisher on the sell side. Um, and as Steve's articulated, where this type of project has been undertaken in the past, it has typically only got as far as this stage. Um, and that's because um, agencies themselves, even if you are operating a fully disclosed programmatic model with your agency, uh, which I hope uh, many of you are, um, the agency itself still only has the ability to see as far as the DSP. What they don't then see is what happens within the sell side supply chain. The only way you can get access to this is through the publisher, which is why you need the, we need the cooperation of the AOP. And then the uh, PwC's task in this is to take that data from the buy side, from the agency and from the DSP, the data from the sell side, predominantly from the SSP and the publisher, and knit that together. Um, uh, which will be the job of Steph, supported by um, our sort of data analysts and data scientists. Essentially, we'll be looking for match keys between buy-side data and sell-side data. So you're going to be looking for spend on a particular campaign with a particular creative being served at a particular time to a particular publisher. Once you start to find those sorts of matches, you can match up that data. Once you've matched that data, that then enables you to start to get a picture of what is happening at each stage in terms of the money that is being taken. Um, that will then build up an end-to-end -end picture of where the money goes. Um, and importantly, it will help identify um, averages, ranges, and outliers. Um, and our hypothesis is both within DSPs and SSPs, we will find significant variation between DSP1, DSP2, DSP3, and between SSP1, SSP2, SSP3, and within SSP1, and within DSP1, and so on. We also think we'll find significant variation depending on the type of campaign, the nature of the customer, the nature of the publisher, and so on. Um, and I should emphasize that we are really keen to avoid phrases like leakage and tech tax because they are such loaded terms. Um, and what is important is that Everybody, buy side and sell side, has a proper understanding of where the money goes through the supply chain and the nature of the services being provided in return and the value that those services can deliver. Um, in particular, I very strongly believe that in this world, um, lowest price is often very, very bad news. So this is not designed to be an exercise in driving down price and driving down quality of service. What it is designed to be is an exercise in transparency. Um, and at the end, the, uh, the outputs from the study um, will be at a number of levels. There will be an industry-wide report which sets out what we have learned about each stage of the supply chain for the benefit of the industry as a whole. <laughs> for participating um, advertisers, there would also then be a bespoke report for each specific advertiser about their specific campaigns so that you can then understand what is happening to your money as it finds its way through agency, trading desk, DSP, SSP, publisher. And there would also be recommendations <coughs> on things that you might want to investigate further, questions or challenges you might want to pose either to your agency or the agency trading desk or potentially to the DSP if you have a direct DSP relationship in order to optimize that supply chain in the future and we firmly believe that an optimized supply chain will be in the, in the interest of advertisers. Clearly, more of your money should emerge as working media in a better optimized supply chain. We also think it will benefit premium publishers because an ecosystem in which only, to use the famous Guardian example, an ecosystem in which only 30% of what the client spends emerges as revenue for a premium publisher is not a sustainable ecosystem. So, it is in both advertisers' and publishers' interests to understand this end-to-end, -end, ultimately with a view to driving up working media, and also with a view to rewarding high-quality DSPs, SSPs, trading desks, and weeding out those areas or those uh, entities that aren't adding value. Um, key to the success of this study, um, ultimately, this will be about the volume of participating publishers and the volume of participating advertisers. The more publishers and advertisers that participate, the more data that we can match 
the more statistically valid the, the study becomes. And that will then enable us to deliver the transparency through the data access. Um, benefits. Um, I don't, I, I'm about to start reading them out, and I, you know, that's not the best way to present a slide with that much text, clearly. Um, I think that the ultimate benefit is, as I've just articulated, it's about driving up the proportion of working media and rewarding those intermediaries that add value. That's the benefit, and that benefits advertisers, and it benefits publishers. Um, so, the types of metrics that we will be looking at, go over to this side, looking at total spend, we're looking at agency fees, trading desk fees, then we're looking at what is happening within the DSP world. Um, I think one of the things I'm keen to emphasize is that this is not an exercise in beating down agency fees. Um, almost quite the rest. Obviously, we need agency cooperation in order to access the data beyond that stage. We've presented at the IPA, and the agencies are very supportive of this conceptually. Because the agencies said, you know, the agencies themselves struggle to see past DSP and they struggle to articulate to their clients, i.e., to you, what is happening past DSP. So um, the agencies are welcoming of a study which enables them to see through to the sell side and to have those conversations with you. Um, the agencies were also very open in that they have a concern that obviously one part of where the money goes is the agency fee and, and the trading desk fee, and does that mean that this will end up resulting in an exercise that um, where they're forced to defend their fees rather than what it should be, which is about a supply chain optimization? Um, so I think when you're talking to your agencies, please echo what I've said, which is that this is not about um, beating down the agency fees. You know, any, to participate in this study, you need to be on a fully disclosed model, otherwise you're not going to get any data anywhere. <laughs> you need to be on a disclosed model. If you're on a disclosed model, you already know the fees you are paying your agency. If what you want to do is just benchmark those agency fees, you don't need this study. You literally just need to run an RFP between your agency and two others, and you can get a comparison of agency fees, because they are disclosed by their nature in a disclosed model. So, um, and for me personally, I have to say, having spent a lot of time with agencies and agency trading desks, um, I would, be, I would, for something this complicated, such as programmatic advertising, whether in a PMP or an open exchange, I would want the very best people at the very best agency executing my digital campaigns, which means I would be inclined to pay more rather than less, bluntly. So, um, you know, there are some agencies who I think are exceptionally strong in this area. They are the ones that you want working on your digital campaign. Just me. Um, in terms of how the data, how the outputs will be split, um, the reports that you get and the analysis that we do, we'll be looking at display and video. We did have some requests for, for audio, but we don't think there'll be a sufficient volume of transactions for us to look at that in this study. So we're looking at display and video. We will also analyze between open exchange and private marketplace. We've also had some questions about whether we'll do um, programmatic guaranteed. Um, depending on the volume of programmatic guaranteed transactions, we will either aggregate them with private marketplace or we'll break them out separately if there's sufficient volume. We'll only know that once we know the volume of advertisers that are signed up and participating in the study. Um, how will this work? First step is qualitative, which is effectively interviews with clients, with agencies, with trading desks, with publishers. Um, and then after that, it is data gathering time. Um, in terms of the data that we'll be gathering, we'd be gathering data from you as the advertisers about the campaigns that you have run. We'll be gathering data from the publishers about the revenues that they've received. We would then be going on site at the agency to, um, to match that up through the agency data. And there. So the idea is by 31st of March, we know how many publishers and advertisers have elected to participate. April, we start the field work. Field work will finish around about June. Inevitably, there will be a pause through July and August, but we'd like to be able to pu publish the results, both the industry-wide study and the uh, private bespoke report for each participating advertiser 
we would aim to publish in September. In terms of um, reactions so far, we've presented a number of these types of events for advertisers and uh, very promising signs in terms of the number of advertisers that would like to sign up. Uh, one of the key questions I'm in your shoes is um, how much does it cost to participate? So the fee would be 20K for each participating advertiser. Um, the requirement would be that you are spending about £100,000 uh, across a three-month period on programmatic advertising. So if you're spending more than £100,000 across a three-month period on programmatic advertising, then that is sufficient volume that the analysis would be, uh, can be undertaken, it would be worthwhile. <coughs> it would be 20K to participate. Just to put that in context, if you were just undertaking a media audit, you'd be paying somewhere in the region of 30 to 40K probably just for a media audit, and that literally only gets you as far as there. The benefit of this study is you're getting the industry scale, which also means it can operate at a more economic price point. Um, uh, so for 20K, you're getting full visibility right the way across your chain. That is not something that you can get anywhere else. This type of, this full end-to-end -end study has never been undertaken before, so it is genuinely world-leading um, and, and hopefully game-changing for the digital advertising when the results arrive. If you have questions about the practicalities of how the study will operate, the mechanics, the types of data, whether your spend qualifies, then please do direct those directly through to us at PwC, and you can get mine and Steph and Neil's emails either from Claire or from Steve. If you're just registering that actually you'd like to, you've thought this through, you'd like to participate, then if you register that with ISBAR through Steve and Claire, ISBAR will consolidate all of the participating advertisers. And I'm taking that as a yes, you're signed up, so brilliant. <laughs> um, in terms of the volume, we definitely need more than 10 advertisers for this to, uh, to work. We're confident we will get there. If we get anything towards 20, that, that, you know, that, I think that would be fantastic. That would be a, uh, you know, 20 major advertisers in the UK. I think that would generate fantastic results.